Welcome back to the course FEA analysis using SOLIDWORKS. In this video, we will be talking about buckling and buckling analysis. The topics we will be covering in this video are what is buckling, the difference between bending and buckling, the relationship between buckling shape and the type of fixtures, performing a buckling analysis in SOLIDWORKS, and in the end, we'll just have a summary. So let's just move on with our first topic. What is buckling? Buckling is the sudden change in the shape of a component which is under a load. A good example for buckling is the bowing of a column which is under compression or the wrinkling of a plate under shear stress. Buckling generally occurs when an object is subjected to a gradually increasing load. When the load reaches a critical level, then the member may suddenly change its shape and deform. The critical load at which the member buckles is called the Euler load. People often confuse between buckling and bending. Bending is generally a state of stress that is developed in an object due to the external force whereas buckling is a state of instability and the buckling failure is exclusive due to the instability of the slender member rather than the material deficiency. Bending generally occurs during the entire duration the load is applied whereas that is not the case with buckling. Buckling occurs suddenly and only when the load reaches the Euler critical load. You can actually perform a simple experiment for this yourself. If you're still not quite sure as to what the difference between buckling and bending really is, you can perform a simple experiment for this. Let's take a slender steel scale. We'll fix it on two sides of a simple beam. Now place a small load. You'll notice that our scale is bent to a certain degree. As we keep adding the load, the scale continues to bend. Now let's do buckling. Let's position our scale in a vertical position like this and provide support to it so that it doesn't fall. Now let's start adding more and more load to it from the top. You can notice that initially the scale does not deflect but after a certain load it suddenly bends to the side. Why? Well simple. It just reached the critical load of buckling. The buckling geometry of the material can also depend on the type of fixtures the member have. To prove this we have an image. Here you can see that the four metal strips have different shapes of buckling. But why? It's because of the different fixtures each of these strips have. There are three types of fixtures being used on the metal strips. They are pinned, fixed and free. A pinned end has a restraint on the translatory motion in all axes, but it is free to rotate about the axis in which it is pinned. Whereas that is not the case with a fixed end. Fixed ends have restraints in all types of motion. They can't rotate, nor can they translate. The next one is a free end. Well, free ends are kind of self-explanatory. The column is free to move about any direction and there are no restraints present in it. A good example for a free end column are the legs of a chair. Well, that's it for the theory part. Let's just move on to our software part. Okay, so what I have here is the SOLIDWORKS window. I've already opened the model in the assembly view. So this will be provided to you as an STL file uh, when you're attempting the challenge. And what this model actually is, is this is a cyclonic separator and this thing is actually resting on a support which has four legs. And what we will be doing right now in this simulation is to find whether these four legs will buckle or not. That's the objective of our simulation. Let's just start with it. Uh, I've already added the simulation license to the interface. So if you don't have it, you can just go into SOLIDWORKS add-in. And you can press this one and you'll just get this one and let's click new study buckling and you can just name it whichever you want i'm just going to leave it with the default name let me click this deck and before we proceed on with the simulation part uh, assigning material load and everything there's one more thing that we need to do and that is to suppress the unnecessary parts this assembly is actually divided into four separate parts, the stamp and three different parts of the cyclonic separator itself. For our simulation, these three are not required. But when you're running a simulation, you need to mesh every single component that is here. And this will only just increase the computational time and also will just complicate the entire process a little bit. So I'll just suppress these three by, let's go to parts. I'll just control and select these three. 
exclude from analysis. You can either do this or go into the design tree and separate them there. Okay, we have our stand here. So let's give our stand a material. Apply or edit material. Before I press apply, there's something which you need to know. You see, we have a few of the parameters in red color, a few in blue, and a few in black. And what it means is that the red values are very vital for this specific simulation. So if you don't have elastic modulus, since we're running a buckling analysis, elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, and mass density are important. If you don't have these three values, you just can't run the simulation. The same way if you run a static analysis or a dynamic analysis, every single time you open this material dialog box, you will be seeing that different values will be in the different color combination. And red means it is required. So if you don't have elastic modulus, you, you're not running the simulation. So I'll just press apply and press close. Um, okay, so you can see that this has changed color. And the fixtures will just give a fixed geometry. Control 8. It's very important that you ensure that you give the proper points on the geometry fix, or else you'll just end up with wrong results, which we don't want that to happen. Let me just click another one. Over here and control seven back to isometric view, and and you can see that four of the ends have been fixed. External load will give a force. We will give a force on this face on the top and. 200 kilonewtons, so 200 kilonewtons is a thousand newtons, so one, two, three. So we have 200,000 newtons of force acting directly downwards on this face. Don't need to select any directions because the direction is actually, the assumed direction is correct because this is downwards is how we want it and downwards is how it is giving us. So before we move into meshing, there's something we I need to tell you. These four legs is where majority of the deformation is going to take place. So to get much better results, what we can do is we can increase the refinement of the mesh on these four legs alone, and then add a much more coarse mesh on the top plate. That we can do it using the mesh control. So let me give, apply mesh control. Just take a little bit more time. The normal because you need to select select individual faces and not the edges Okay, we have selected all four of the legs, all faces of the legs, and we will give a six millimeter mesh for all four of these legs. This is a very fine mesh. Uh, it will take a little bit of time, so let me just change it to nine. Let me just click the tick button, and now what we'll do is we'll just create a normal mesh.
nice we have our mesh results here you can see that the mesh size at the different parts is different here this is a much more coarse mesh since we manually selected that we want the mesh in these parts to be much finer than the top plate that's what it is now since we have everything that is required let's just run the simulation on the study it should take a little bit of time since the mesh here is very fine okay we have the result here here you can see this is how the deformation of this support bracket will occur you can actually have a look at the animation here click on animate and it should take place creating the frames that are required for the animation and here we have it increase the number of frames and just play along with that let's go back to the isometric view control 7 and you can also save this i've shown you how to do it in one of our previous videos and another good part about this is you can actually generate a report of all your results in buckling analysis uh, if you go press report it will give you a dialog box report options dialog box and it will ask you what are the values that you want in your report to be the header information who's the designer which company does it belong to the url the logo the address every single thing you don't really have any information that needs to be input i'll just give publish show report on publish so if you click this one it'll just once the report is generated it'll show it to you yes publish yeah so we have our report here so here you can see the 3d model of our object simulation of our symbol four the date at which this was done the designer the study's name and what type of analysis this was and you just get pretty much everything the original model with the cyclonic separator and everything the model which we analyzed excluding the cyclonic separator information of the model and all the other required values this can have a once you run your uh, simulation you can just do this and check the results this should be much helpful if you have a college project and you required photos for these you don't really need to go back into the simulation create a snipping or take a screenshot of it this will generate a very good quality image for yourself and you can just cut copy and paste it wherever you require it and another important thing is the load factor I'll just talk about it in a minute. Let's just go ahead and close this Word document. Since we're back to our model, let's go to results and press list buckling factor of safety. So the buckling factor of safety that we have obtained is 7.0121. So roughly it's seven, that means the load that is required to actually buckle this support bracket is actually seven times what we have given in most places as a general rule of thumb um, it is expected that the buckling factor of safety of whichever component that they are using is must be more than three and another one that you need to consider is to increase the load factor or the buckling factor of safety for a model 
all you need to do is just maybe you can add a stiffener it can either be along the axis horizontal axis or can be along the vertical axis and you will be working upon that as a challenge and that's it for this video guys let's have a quick summary of all the content that we've looked in this video so first we learned what is buckling we then learned what euler's critical load for buckling is after this we had a look at the relationship between the shape of buckling and the type of fixtures used and also their effects on buckling we then proceeded on to the software part and performed a simple buckling analysis on a cyclonic separator stand well that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept and i'll meet you again in the next one bye